Okay, rolling. So we're here with Stefano from the uh, Spatial Ecology Project. He's he's one of the two founders. Uh, introduce yourself briefly, Stefano. Yes, hi everybody. I'm Stefano Casaregno. I'm an ecologist, a botanist, and now a data scientist working for the University of Exeter in the Cornwall campus. And I was just um, uh, discussing with uh, Martin uh, different uh, potential collaboration that we could do uh, working with farmers. So we're talking about open source GIS, a plugin yes. for QGIS for site planning for farmers. Great, yes, exactly that. I was just uh, thinking and discussing uh, about the, the, there are two main things. One it would be the site planning side and the other one is the site monitoring. So in the site planning we plan what we are going to realize and we uh, try to understand our, our farm or our environment and then we can decide what to do. On the monitoring side, it's very interesting to keep looking at what's happening in our farm. So what I am proposing, uh, for instance, is to provide farmers with some updated technology, for instance, on, on satellite data. So we have a lot of information, for instance, on plant productivity. We could potentially access two images a day, but easily we could access like uh, at least uh, two images a month of what our um, uh, land is producing as, as um, uh, chlorophyll, as uh, uh -huh. primary chlorophyll. So uh, I don't know how is the situation in, in US or, but here in Europe, normally farmers, there are very few of them that are aware of those products, which are open access are freely available. The difficulties is to understand how to access, how to interpret those data, how to use it as a single private user. So one of the objectives uh, of our collaboration would be to teach farmers how to access those data and how to monitor their own farm, to teach them how to use those software. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? You believe that the, you guys over there are, are willing to access those information? It's useful for you? Absolutely. So, so step one is assessment, and that starts with assessing the land itself by walkthroughs and soil and water and all these other measurements, which, which we can help define in this process. And the second part is what are all the existing databases, data sets that we can access right now that most people don't even know they exist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. As far as the monitoring part, what are the accessible open source hardware tool chains available? What, what measurements can we make right now that are using open source hardware? We'd like to focus on as much as op on the open hardware as possible. Hardware, you mean? Yeah, like the hardware. sensors themselves. So there's... Uh, for sense for data collection, various sensors. I mean, the things that we we'd be interested in, of course, are moisture in the soil. I, mean, I don't know if there's any measurements for fertility, or I mean, there's definitely biological life. Uh, what what are the typical measurements that people wanna wanna take on a farm, well, or that are available uh, common practice? On, on open source, basically now there is an explosion of sensor available. Mm -hmm. and Soil humidity, uh, irrigation, uh, we can convert uh, give up potential evapotranspiration from the, the soil and the plant. We could do this measure. We could have uh, NDVI camera. It is an index of uh, photosynthetic activity. So we, we could have a very low cost camera uh, that, that basically take pictures of how much chlorophyll there and if the chlorophyll is active or if the plant is in a healthy state or if plants are having some disease problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, leaf yeah. wetness, there are sensors like leaf wetness sensors. Um, of course all the climatic uh, information of the microclimate of the farm are very interesting I believe for farmers. The more we know more Mm -hmm. adjust our um, uh, organization within the farm. Um, the, the problem I see uh, is that this 
still require a bit of prototyping. So there is a lot of prototype, a lot of people in the world that have been assembling things and proposing projects. But then for a very complete uh, technology that is working, that is reliable, that can work for two, three years, um, probably we need to work more for, and that would be great to have a, a crowd of people that is, uh, are, are uh, involved in this and can improve the, the hardware. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there, there are, we need to check because there is a project in Spain from a company called Libelli. I can send you the link, that uh -huh. is very interesting and they are doing research and they are providing this uh, already assembled uh, hardware kit for uh, monitoring and for sensoring the environment for uh, agricultural process. Uh, do you have a link for that? Yes. Um, and I was going to ask if there's anything uh, outside of taking a microscope out, are there any sensors for actual biological life in the soil? Microbes, well, fungus, nematodes. Yeah, that, that, I'm not completely updated on that, and uh, probably there is something, but again, it's not a, a ready to use uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, product. So, one thing that we should think of and we should work is that we take what's best available and make it open hardware. Yeah. Guys in, in, in Spain, Libellium, they are basically working on uh, Arduino based project. Are you familiar with the Arduino? Sure, sure. Project? We used Arduino in our brick press controller, yeah. Great. So, and, and so they, that's what they have done. They took an Arduino and they make it a, a, a more stable, reliable version of an Arduino that could stay there and it's less. Uh, uh, Energy consuming, there is a solar panel, and everything is already integrated. So, basically, we can access to the code okay. uh, that are um, uh, compiled for those sensors, but I'm not sure 100% that they, they also uh, share the, the circuit of the, their platform from the bed. Okay. But they, they provide a lot of they provide a lot of um, documentation, so one thing could be to work more on those platforms and ad adapt and, and, and create something uh, for our problem. Yeah, excellent. Jonathan, uh, our community manager has, sorry, uh, Jonathan, our community manager has just joined us, so he's listening in as well. And okay, for Jonathan, yeah, we're, we discussed briefly that we would develop a site planning plugin for farmers for QGIS, the open source GIS. So Stefano is the found, one of the co-founders of the Spatial Ecology Project, which is about basically teaching open source GIS tools. And he came into it because in a certain GIS pro problem that he had, he had no, the, the proprietary software just could not do it. It did not, have, did not have the flexibility. So he switched to open GIS and has stuck ever since. So, so we definitely have cultural alignment and uh, common goals on basically bringing access to this material. Excellent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, well, we, we should try to start with the uh, and then we begin to more on this. And I believe um, a, a, probably a first step will be a training on, on like site planning or monitoring. So that, uh, I understand that uh -huh. you're focus on the hardware side but probably at the, at the beginning we should start oh yes with, no with the GIS part so the, the planning and the monitoring. yes yes absolutely let's yeah i mean we're talking about all these other tools but i mean the main goal of this workshop is to execute a site plan for factory farm including perhaps i don't know if we can spend a day where we actually look at the future use intent and for us in the long term, it's to create an educational campus, we call it OSC campus, which has pretty much an, a whole autonomous infrastructure for converting the natural resources from the site into our experiment of creating modern civilization. So basically, a teaching campus where the people participate in the 
uh, basically getting all the re converting all the resources to see what's the minimum scale at which advanced civilization can happen. So it's it's part of this much greater experiment. But the the thing for factory farm is to get its land up to productivity. I mean, right now it's highly eroded. Uh, so there's regeneration work to be done, starting with a site plan to get all the erosion works, uh, erosion worked out, ponds and other things, basic, basic site planning, including what the future buildings would look like. So that would be one aspect of the, um, of the project, including a high emphasis on how do we put this potentially up in the cloud such that people can review, access, and contribute to the planning work or monitoring work remotely. And I'm, I'm wondering if you've done, uh, if a lot of what you do is uh, in that collaborative cloud sense as well. Do you, do you have that capacity? Um, well, there, is, uh, there are projects which I am familiar with. For instance, there is the Quantum Gist Cloud. Mm -hmm. So basically, you, you, you could check it later or in the, so you, you, you can work on your desktop, on your computer, and you build your GIS project with your database and map, and then it is published online. And so basically, with a login and a password, it yeah. is a collaborative uh, experience. Experiment. Yeah. Uh, the Quantum Gist Cloud has different levels. So the first access is free of use and no cost. Then, if you exceed the amount of data that you upload, you need to pay something. They are hosting your, your data. Mm -hmm. And there is a third level that is more uh, on um, providing also, I think, uh, training or follow up of your work if you need. So it's yeah. more oriented. Right. And uh, most of open source project works like this. You can okay. Access. Um, Within the framework of, of spatial ecology, when we do, for example, when we do the site plan for Factory Farm, will that be something that we just carry on our desktop or how does that work and how can we share that file well that, that could be that could be done on our desktop or we can find ways of, of doing web gis what what uh, uh, for instance the uh, quantum gist cloud so it's like uh, we publish the, 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 our work online and then we, we can share and include those uh-huh would it but, make but, uh, I believe the to start with, I mean, to start with, to work with, it, it would be good that um, we um, we have a best of people working on that. Also, I imagine that each farmer, in the end, is, uh, is interested in sharing the knowledge of how to do it, but it is very interesting in his land. So yes. he wants to, to, act, you know, to upload each image or each specific data for his own uh, regional interest. So there could be a shared uh, infrastructure where all single farmers in the world populate those uh, uh, databases online, but then each farmer might also have a, a more rich or specific uh, data uh, mm -hmm. for his farming that uh -huh. maybe the whole community is not interested in. Can but can the process yeah. be phased in the sense that we generate our plan within QGIS on a desktop? Are there ways to later, at a later stage, simply to publish that so it's just visible? Yes. Okay. That, that, that's what I was thinking. And yeah, is, yeah. There is a GIS plugin that is basically a plugin that makes a screenshot of your desktop project and publish that project online. Uh huh. Is it. Interactive in any way or or no? Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not command line. So you basically select the map, the the the, the, the color you want to have in your map, the, the logo, the whatever, and then you publish. It. So you because while working with farmer, I don't know, but if you have a lot of, I think you need to to simplify that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the point. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, static screenshots of your GIS plan that's easy to embed online yeah okay yeah. And if work more, I have done something uh, I should have a yeah point. yeah that'll be that'll be fine yeah um, w one thing when you say site planning it's about the whole property 30 acres the 
the roads are, where the yeah. houses are, where the orchard are, where yeah. the crops are, where the horse or the cow, whatever. Yes. You, you, and because I was already thinking for, for what, what I see in Tuscany, I did some site planning and basically the, the my interest in, in the productive part so was to organize how I would plant my tree. So there are different um, um, settings, right? Like every three meters, every five meters and each row is uh, isolated by a, a different so I had to try different um, possibility check how many trees could stay in that parcel doing something like this and I don't know if I, 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 I explained it well but basically you could have in a surface with a very complex shape because not parcel are not always square and then you can decide how many plants or which density you want to plant it and you can have different scenarios. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. So that, and these are the things that uh, also those doctors can do. They can propose uh, like a regular grid or a different uh, uh, density and, and type of, of condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of our work will revolve around perennial polycultures um alley cropping a lot of different not 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 any not really any single crop a lot of a lot of our for work will focus on polyculture integrated pest management systems yeah um yep because uh, uh well one thing is i need to mention i i this will be a bit new for me as well mm -hmm. I, I am very excited to learn more and to build up because for me this training will be also the opportunity some more knowledge from you that explain what is your requirement and then this I could I can replicate with other farmers in Europe and UK and but I need to understand what your needs are and prepare myself and prepare if, if it's me or if I, if I need to find other people to uh, yeah. join the training and uh, but I believe we need to you, you know uh, talk a bit together what what could be the, the the training about more yeah. details. I, I have to, to see all the, the tutorials and how to. Okay. So take a look at the the link I just pasted in, and let's yeah. start editing the. So. We would like to do this. So 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 were you going to be in the United States around that time, or this is where you'd be coming. Specifically for this. Uh, so so curriculum plan for. Travel to U U.S. is going to be defined by how many people will uh, subscribe for the Santa Barbara training and this other training that we are um, planning to do in Vancouver. So probably I would need to come anyway. Stefan cannot do everything um, by his own. Uh huh. So the. So I, I will be there in July. Most likely. Okay. Uh, so our schedule in July looks like um, June, July, the, the 10th through the 15th, we are planning a workshop on the micro tractor. So we're going to actually be, be building micro tractors. So wow. 16 onwards is possible until the 25th. Initially, we were because the 25th, we have a workshop on the Miracle Orchard. So and I let me come back. The twenty fifth, I need to be the twenty fourth, something like that. I need to be in Europe, like in Europe. And, and but I, I believe so that it could be between the sixteenth and the twenty three, something like this. These are the dates that would fit me best. Maybe if I come and have a chat with you and and work just with you before sixteen, seventeen, and then we 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 teach the training from I don't know from the eighteenth to the twenty three, something like this. Okay, so so your event. Let's see. So on your schedule, just to get back to the plan here, July. When does your event, other your other commitments? When do they end? It's the week before, the until the seventeenth. So I, I should, uh, yeah, it's not still fixed, and then 
and also because we are going two people, I can do a part and step so we can move. But I believe that, um, the the best time will be somewhere between the 18th to the the week between the 18th and the 23rd of the July. Okay. So excuse me, I'm uh, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at May. Wait, July. So July. Monday is uh, uh, it's Monday 20. Yes, Monday the twentieth. Mm -hmm. Twentieth. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So that that day, twentieth to twenty-four. Twenty-four. Eventually, I could I could come the weekend or something. I well then see also with you how you are. It would be great just to, to meet you in person and uh, having a chat and discover more. <laughs> yeah. So so oh. currently. The time that would fit most for you would be the twentieth through the twenty fourth. Yeah, yeah. Or you guys are also used to give those training during the weekend. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, we typically like to have weekend workshops because people have weekends free. However, this we want to do a good job on this, so that will require a week, basically the five days or so. So you can't do that on a weekend, but we can start. I mean, we can extend that course if you'd like. I mean. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. And maybe, you know... No, because uh, also after some days, then people need to, you know, stop learning more and play with it. Uh-huh. I think it's not too productive in, in this specific field to give too many information into... Okay. okay. Four or five days, it's a lot. They, they will learn a lot. And then probably people need to go home and, and use those tools and, and improve and, you know... Okay. Uh, yeah, so perhaps the best time would be the 18th. And maybe what we can do is maybe we should advertise this as there's a brief weekend introduction course and a full course for those people who really want to do it. Can yeah. we? Would we be able yeah. to structure it like that? So we can put in most of the uh, kind of the learning into the weekend, but the practice... I mean, something that we can entertain people with that would be worthwhile for somebody to come for two days yeah. and also for the entire week. Yeah, so maybe in the two there will be a, a great introduction and then the, the, the weekend for two days like that and then mm -hmm. three more days or four more days, maybe building up yeah. people's projects so we can supervise them they, to obtain their data, to use their data and to build their own project. Well, can we apply that to actually the, the application to Factory Farm? Because that's the main thing from our perspective. We'd like to get a plan for our site. And since we're on the site, one thing we can do is actually take data points and apply them to the maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. would work the most favorably for us. Do you think that would work? If we focus on, okay, here you learn an entire process and template for doing a site plan using open tools, and then you're welcome to apply it to other places. Basically create a template while producing a, a visible, clear product that people can also yeah. feel good about. Okay, we, we made the site plan for Factory Farm. Yeah, that could be, yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Definitely. That would be a very good way. I'm just thinking... Um, one of your questions, well, then, then later on we need to go a bit more in detail what we really want to realize. But um, uh, one thing you were mentioning, because I think the success of this is how many people attend. Yeah. And it would, it would be good to have enough people, maybe to have two persons teaching. As I say, one, because I also know that uh, uh, teaching over five days, one person is exhausting. So mm -hmm. if you have two, one is talking like half a day, and uh, the other one is um, supervising. Yeah. And then you switch. would it be since I'm a deep stakeholder in this process, and I would like to teach this in the future? Would it work if you worked with me beforehand a bit, to so I could be your assistant, or I could be the second teacher, or? Yeah, that that will work. Yeah. Uh, well, we have never worked together, and um, that that. I mean, from my perspective, basically, if if I function as the teacher in training for future workshops, that would, yeah. 
I would like that. Yeah, that would be a good, uh, good opportunity. Um, but as I say, also, also for me, this is a kind of a new experience okay. of, of teaching. So I will learn while doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, Okay. And I mean, uh, in the spirit of open source, we can we can say that's that's fine as long as we manage the expectations that we're developing. That this is the first workshop where we're applying and developing the techniques as well, so we publish early and often. So this yeah. is within an open source culture, for people who understand that it's a highly agile and and creative process. While you can still get a basis of of advanced tool use and all of that. But at the same time, we're developing a process that hasn't really been done before yeah, in general. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Do you feel comfortable with, with the open source approach, uh, of taking the open source uh, approach to the actual workshop? I mean, the, the, the culture, the, the kind of culture that we promote, which is no, we, we're not coming there with all the answers for you. We, we have a lot to offer, but we are also relying on a, on a crowd, the people who attend, to be involved in the process and to contribute to developing it. Yeah, that's that's great. That's a, a fantastic idea. Um, what are your reservations, if any, about that process? What What do you think the challenges would be versus the opportunities there? Mm -hmm. I think that everything will go smoothly because people just, just can help us. They can yeah. build a tunnel. Right, so, right. Uh, but what we need to work out before the training is some basic things. Well, the... what's more effective because I already have an idea. Basically, at the beginning, the, the training will be uh, more on really a basic introduction to GIS. What is a vector layer? What is a raster data? A projection? How to load and modify those? Yeah. Hello? So, yeah. so we should probably start maybe. People need to know how to deal. Okay. So let's start documenting this. Let's write. Start writing a curriculum for the. Yeah. The two to five days. Either two, basically either five or six days. Yeah. So the first, so day one, day two, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So day one. So day one will be intro to G I GIS. So you see the document there? Page three. Okay, so go to page three in the last document. Uh-huh. Okay, so intro to GIS. So the main things we're gonna cover. So day two, day three, day four, day five. Possibly day six. Um, so we, we said we should do the first couple of days or main introduction of basic what it is and 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 uh, I would yeah. propose intro to site planning and intro to GIS and then I would go into for the second day is actually getting some initial data like basically the land meets GIS uh, basically yeah. we start collecting some data and then putting it into GIS yes and then the land meets GIS and then like uh, remote sensing data or um, uh, auxiliary data so because then there is a part that you need to, to take from your farm but there is a huge amount of uh, information that are available already from the network we can ask stating these uh, as open access data repository or open access uh, GIS data repository. Yeah. Are you familiar with the uh, open streets map? Yes. Yes. Because that that's another initiative that I was involved in. It's, it's great and. Oh, you know, nice. Could have the same uh, thing because that there could be a crowd of people um, giving access to their data collection, and this could be a strong tool for 
modeling or improving. Mm -hmm. uh, How about, um, I think we, so intro to site planning uh, and a crash, I would say in a day one, we also do a crash design, like a real crash design course, uh, crash design for factory farm, basically like a quick design for factory farm where we begin to actually, are you still there? Can you hear me? Yes, sure. Maybe okay. that one, I will put it on day two. So if day two? and what is site planning on day one and then the day two we introduce the data and after that that we have the data we show what is the design factor that I, would, I believe that's the last step of day two because okay at that point we should have all the information okay what we want to do what the tools are where the data are and then we do the crash design uh, so crash design a baseline composite Is that, does that sound right? We can create an initial baseline composite layers map. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then first we're gonna have to talk about what that is and what, what layers are important uh, from an integrated planning perspective.